What would you do for a pair of Nike Miracles? The writers in Atlanta were thinking, what would a black man not want to do for some shoes? Kiss another dude. <laughs> Ridiculous! The whole episode was so realistic, but so ridiculous at the same time. I'm just mind blown. Hey love, it's some girl named A back on your screen with another one to review Atlanta season four, episode six, Crank That Killer. This episode was filled with so many nostalgic moments. If you're a millennial like me, you felt those teas. Ugh. I love this episode, five out of five, certified classic as far as the Atlanta universe goes. Let me know what you thought down below and let's get into this episode. This recap begins with Al sitting in the couch, flipping through 5,000 channels, complaining about there's nothing to watch, sounding a lot like my mom. I always assume there are millennials like me, but Paperboy is giving a lot of boomer energy. Why do you have cable or a box if there's nothing to watch? Stream everything, just like Ern said. Darius turns himself around to say, get rid of everything. You don't need the hydro, you don't need the electricity, you don't need nothing. Just go off the grid. Did you peep that he was wearing a Darius shirt? I'm thinking, is this tipping us off to the conflict of character that we're going to see? Because Darius has always remained consistent to me, but this episode alone flipped the script on its head. He's wearing a Darius shirt, and if you know about Nancy Reagan and that slogan, mm -mm, did a lot of damage to our community. You can Google it if you want. Not only that, wasn't he the one in season three looking for the space cookie in Europe so you can try and live your philosophical ganja life, but you're gonna wear a Dara shirt? Sir, where'd they do that out? Just saying. I also wanna take a moment to point out that the setting is upgraded. Paperboy's house looks so nice. They all are dressed right. Such a far departure from their early beginnings in season one. You remember that stinky sofa. I know it smells. There's no way that couch does not have a stench from being out all four seasons. If it's out in the elements, I don't know how they've been sitting out in it and I'm happy now. They live in this loft looking place. The upgrade is well welcome. It's so nice to see how these characters have evolved. There is so much in this episode and in this scene especially when Ern says nobody watches TV for news. You can stream that. Paperboy says I love CNN. Of all the things, really CNN? And I'm thinking, maybe I was wrong. I'm thinking that Ern is going to list off Philip DeFranco or Weon or any of these other platforms that do have credible news. Nope. <laughs> Four social media platforms, The Shade Room, Lipstick Alley, Twitter, Black Twitter, a whole mess, and the classic TMZ. I said all four of these are hella messy. And then when they started talking about the crank that killer and laughing, hello, desensitized much? That shows you the times we're in. The biggest theme in this episode to me was the polarity of the past meeting the present, running away from the past and how much we've changed. Did you read it like that too? I saw it in this scene and throughout every scene in this episode. When they were joking on that, I said, guys, you are so wrong for that. And not only that, when Ern said, oh, he cited his sources, that's really all it's gotta take. <laughs> What is this, a study or a research project? Paranoid Paperboy sitting on that couch real quiet only to show us on the screen in the next scene that he has a crank that Jimmy Neutron. This took me all the way back. You remember that? People were doing crank that this, crank that that. I never did a crank anything because you wouldn't want to see it in public. Going out to afterlife, if you know, you know. And everyone was here for clearing out the dance floor so you could get that crank that on. We were a mess. We were a whole mess back. This episode took me back. You can see the gears working in Ern's mind. They have to scrub that off the internet, but he should be fine. Only 25 views. Maybe the crank that killer didn't catch that. <laughs> in the next scene, Ern is in the studio asking Paperboy about some Nike miracles. If Nike ever releases a shoe called Miracle, you know where they got that from. <laughs> Someone comes in to tell Al, hey, some guy named Doug is here. I'm thinking some guy named Doug. Uh-uh, his name is some guy named Doug. I'm going some girl named A from now on because I'm here for that. Although Paperboy describes some guy named Doug as this enigmatic, exciting person, he doesn't want to work with him. His music is trash. Let me know if I've missed this, but I've never seen a Fugazi Al before. He's always been real. So to see this fraudulent side, him be fake, pour the drink, the liquid all over the soundboard just so he doesn't have to make a track with this guy, I was like, isn't that serious? Just say no. But you know what? Had he said no, 
who knows what would happen at the end of this episode. Maybe, I never thought I'd say this, but maybe fate came in handy and it was fate. Leave that where it is till we get to the end of it. So Alfred's back at home. He decides to call up Soldier Boy. I'm thinking, please let it not be like last week. Let it be the real Soldier Boy. He picks up the voice sounds right, the scene. Then we see him on the screen and he's wearing such a pretty hoodie. I love purple. I love that color. It's Soldier Man, the one who invented YouTube. If you've ever seen him talk on an interview or on his own social, he's the troll king he knows how to invent everything but you got to give credit where it's due before soldier boy we didn't have the ringtone songs and crank that he basically should have said i created tiktok too at this rate i love the back and forth because there's a subtle flex in every line he's talking about his glasses the game the other ventures he has going on but he's going to a safe farm because he makes the most crank that content out of anyone there ever was I said safe farm. Paper Boy says the same thing. And the slogan he says is ridiculous. The crank that King clicks off for us to hear some creaking upstairs. I thought, is this the supernatural element of Atlanta? And we haven't seen too much of that this season. And you know, they always put a little bit in. I also thought, is this to refer to a lot of rappers who've been robbed and killed in their houses? Either way, Paper Boy's not here to play. He gets his coat and he leaves. We see him at the mall at the pretzel maker. Tiffany offers him two extra pretzels. I love how she gives him pretzels, but then throws shade when she messes his chartreuse to let him know that she's there. I peep the love and hate. Paperboy asks, how did you know it was me? She said, it's hard to find a hat without a logo, which is true. It's also a callback to New Jazz, my favorite episode of all time, season three, episode eight, when he's wearing the Chanel hat in the museum and Lorraine says, that's not for you. And then he wears the goofy hat. There's a metaphor at play, wearing and putting on different hats. He's still playing with the Alfred paperboy dichotomy. And I love that he's trying to blend in, but he always stands out when he tries to do that. <laughs> I love how she points out Chris Evans in the background, and this is the second time they paid homage to Chris Evans. If you don't know, thanks to the subby who let me know when we did the season three reviews, Chris Evans is a huge fan of the Atlanta universe. I think she told me he's supposed to be in an episode, but he couldn't, so instead they made a drink after him, and they also made a double in this episode. It's also layered and leveled because they always layer and level everything in Atlanta. This is how he looks like in Captain America, that not so covert cover up. Why does everyone try to do the hat pulled down cover up? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. The next time we see Paperboy, he's chilling outside. Kids are in the back doing TikToks. I used to look at people who did that sideways, but you know what? I can't anymore because we were up to nonsense too. Atlanta magnificently mirrors ourselves back at ourselves. Anytime I've ever mocked a TikTok kid, I should look back at Crank That and what we did. Also teach me how to Dougie. What other songs were trending with dances back in the day that you can think of? We see a car pull up, but we can hear you've arrived at your location. This is also pairing into the things that have changed in our present day. Back in the day, you just had to know where you were going. You couldn't just put GPS in, but we live so much off of tech these days. It's insane. Paperboy gets up and starts running and I'm getting PTSD. This throws me back to new jazz, to woods. How many times has he run? I feel like we see him run every season. Now I see what Tiffany from Pretzel Maker was saying. Every time he passes someone, they have a hat on with a logo. That's when shots ring out. This guy who I assumed was a crank that killer. Did you read that too? I misread it, but you know, I was trying to put pieces together where they didn't fit. He starts to duck and dodge. He finds a kiosk where they have the digital belts. Do you remember those? I love that the kiosk lady's like, I gotta be honest with you. The last person that bought one was a crackhead. Are you a crackhead? I fell out. As a Canadian, whenever I see these scenes in TV, I'm like too soon. But then I also think when's too soon because there's a mass shooting in the States every week. Then I started to laugh and catch myself because I felt this confounding feeling when other people started pulling out their strap. I said even the woman with the shoulders got strapped. I just... You know, Paperboy's usually the first to pull out his gun. He did that in the studio when his auntie was coming through. He's running through. The guy's still running after him. This is when Roberto comes up to take his chance to wrap about a jacuzzi and he gets shoved into the glass. Who knows? Hard landing could have saved his life or be the beginning of a villain arch. Whichever ways it goes, that's the end of Roberto. And as if fate in the stars align, a car opens and it's some guy named Doug. As soon as he got in the car, I was so scared. I thought Doug set him up or was the crank that killer. Al stopped breathing because Doug didn't read the room and started saying, well, I'm heading to the studio, perfect time to lay the track. I said, no, you didn't have to come back with that 
All that avoidance in the beginning to have to pay back the favor, that's how it goes. So many moments I loved about this episode, but how they tied it when the characters reconvened back in Paperboy's house. He had the plant and I thought, wait, is this the plant from episode one of the season from Blue Blood's Funeral? Because it grew. He really got a grew thumb. He really, he, as a plant lady, I'm proud of him for doing that. He was pruning that plant, talking about how he's going to get a state farm. Darius is like, what's that? <laughs> like, let's not get into that again. When he comments on Darius's shoes and Darius says, yeah, to do something for it. And the facial expression Ern had, priceless. And they toss the phone back and forth and the crank that killer has been caught. TMZ exclusive, tying back to the top of this episode of where we get our information from these days. I'm looking at the picture like that's not the guy that chased him at the mall only to find out the one that was chasing him in the mall is someone from his past high school that was mad at him. Atlanta is so random but so real at the same time. The episode ends with the tune playing off the phone. Darius saying that's trash because that's true. And he trying to catch a beat on the aff beat while it plays out. I thought the some guy named Doug was a Nick Cannon parallel, especially when at the end of the credits he says, I'm an actor. That was really giving Nick Cannon comedy meets actor meets artist, I guess you could say. You know, his music is not that bad, but Gigolo was real trash. I don't know if I'm the only one who got that comparison or if I'm just reaching with it, but that's what I read. So let's loop into Darius and Ern's plot to wrap up. Actually, let's do Roberto's real quick. Roberto is another parallel. Same way we talked about in the reparations episode season three, Atlanta gives you stereotypes in different forms and asks you, do you see it the same? When we first see Roberto's girlfriend drive him up, you're not thinking much and you see the baby in the back. Then you hear him talking about his struggle rap career and how he's gonna get big like Big Sean when he performed for Kanye. When he said that, I thought of YWA and if he does get to perform, Paperboy might actually sign him. And then I also thought, wait, they're tying in Crank That Jimmy Neutron 07 Paperboy's video to Big Sean signing to good music. Cause if you don't know, he signed to Kanye West label in 07, a couple years ago, maybe two years ago, he did an interview saying that it wasn't a good idea to do that. Cause Kanye kind of fumbled the bag for him. I don't know if Roberto wants to go that route, but we see how his storyline ends. When we see him handing out the samples and no one's paying attention, one guy fixes himself to say, we've all tried that Bourbon Street chicken. It's so true. I don't know if malls still do this, but there was a time, at least when I worked in the mall, Bourbon Street always handed out some tired, dried out samples. The pretzel maker, ooh, that was a treat. The cinnamon sugar one, everything. And when he handed the tray to the girl to go chase his dream, and she's like, I work at Sabaro's. I was like, does that even still exist? I haven't seen a Sapporo since I was a kid. Everything about that moment was so hilarious. And then when he tried to rap in front of Paperboy, read the room this is not the time for that let's tie it all together wrapping up with darius and urn scene they pull up to a truck and i said this is already going way left initially i thought that they were surveilling al i don't know why i thought that i was reading way too much into it i thought urn was really getting in his manager bag and gonna watch paperboy all day to make sure he was okay nope it turns out this is a shoe man, not to be confused with the sock man. I don't know anyone like that, but he's the plug. And they really want these Nike miracles. I was crying during these scenes. This is pure comedy. When the guy's like, oh, I don't want any money. I have that. I want you guys to kiss. I could tell the writers were in the room thinking, what, what wouldn't black men do for a pair of shoes? Kiss, let's do that. <laughs> Darius, who's usually the voice of philosophical reason, is all for it. When they start talking about principle, I see you there mixing the medicine with the food. Atlanta does that so well. They talk about the culture and have so much commentary without shoving it down our throats. We hear Yearn talking about, you know, black men, we shouldn't be doing this, capitalism. Darius is saying, but there's only a thousand shoes and I'm not paying 10K, it's the principle. And Yearn's saying exactly principle, I'm not giving up my dignity. I mean, I will if you want to. I thought that really spoke to how much they've grown from the season one episode. When they flip the phone for the samurai, the samurai for the dog and the dog for money in the future. These two have really grown to trust one another. When Darius said that we're not gay and he's like, I know. A lot of people like the Black Viper episode from Black Mirror, is that what it was called? 
and how that really spoke on male sexuality in the black culture. This was a moment too, a much shorter moment, but for three seconds after they negotiated and I was just like, are we really watching a negotiation? And that man with the lines, <laughs> when he said the line about Frenching, oh, I'm just working that out. Not the driver trying to set the mood, turning up the Casey and Jojo, that duo doesn't want any part of this, but they kiss for the three seconds to open their eyes and realize that a homie got the smoke from the sniper. <laughs> and they swipe or no swiper with the 10 and a half and 11, which by the way, how did he just conveniently have these rare shoes in his size? Is that how the plug works? I kept thinking they were fake. What would you do for some Nikes? I don't know. I wanted to get them Sakai's, but I wasn't about to pay that price. So I just got these Nikes and they're my only pair. Everything about this episode spoke on every possible level of the culture there is. It was magnificent, 10 out of 10. This show is so intelligent and so stupid simultaneously. We'll never see it again. That is why the season is bittersweet. Each episode gets better and better, but I become more sad and solemn knowing we get closer to the end. We need four more seasons at least. This is definitely in my top three Atlanta episodes for sure. New Jazz is still my everything. This is probably gunning for number two. Let me know if you felt the same. Let me know what you thought down below, what your favorite moment was, anything that I missed, anything you'll add. Thanks as always for making it to the end of this. If you wanna help this channel grow, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like to let the algorithm know that you like these kind of videos. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later. Doop, 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 doop.